My recent open response to Tom Sandlatterer got quite a lot of comments and questions. The best way to answer at least a couple of those questions is with another video. Perhaps the number one question is why not use part design? The answer is that other than because Tom was using the part workbench and I wanted to do the same, no particular reason. I do personally prefer working in the part workbench because it better supports a workflow that suits my way of thinking about the problem. Naturally, your mileage may vary. But because there's been a lot of interest, I thought I would go ahead and show my take on the design using the part design workbench. After that, I'll show another approach on the part workbench that some of you may find a little bit more straightforward than the way I presented last time. The first step, as with the other approaches, is to do a simple profile sketch on the XC plane. I'll open the sketcher and select the XC plane, and I'm going to do a simple line profile. Revolve and Part Design expects to create a solid, so I'll close the sketch. It would be possible for me to actually draw both the inside and outside walls intended for the cup, but as you'll see in a moment, this way may be even easier. So I'll select the sketch and do a revolve. I want this revolve to be 180 degrees to form half of the cup. A solid block is not what we want, so I'm going to select the faces that we would like to see hollowed out and create a thickness. I want the thickness to be 2 millimeters, just like in the previous designs. I'll check the Make Thickness Inward box so that it can actually accomplish the task. And there we have half a cup. Very nice. Since we will be wanting the other half of the cup, I'm going to select the thickness and use the Part Design clone and set it aside for later. This is a minor variation on the draft clone that we've seen previously in that it creates a new body for the clone to live in. It's necessary to do it this way since the part design workbench does not permit having two disconnected solids in one body. I'll select the two faces that make up the split edge and create a sub-object shape binder. Now select the shape binder and in the data pane set an offset of negative 0.5 millimeters. This gives us a face that exactly follows the insides and outsides of the cup and neatly centered. I'll select the sub-object shape binder and I'm going to pad it to 1 millimeter. This gives us a nice tongue that can interlock with the other half of the cup. In a moment I'll make a groove in the other half of the cup that this will fit into. But perfectly square corners can be a little bit difficult to fit, especially since this is going to be 3D printed and not precision milled. So I'm going to select both of the front faces of our tongue and chamfer them by 0.2 millimeters. This just cuts off the sharp corners and edges so it will be a little bit forgiving as you put the cups together and will guide it into place. Now I'll hide that half out of the way and go to work on the other half. Again select the two faces. Create the sub-object shape binder, and again I'm going to offset that to negative 0.5 millimeters. If you need or want to add a little bit more clearance here, you could change the offset to negative 0.4 millimeters to make the pocket a little bigger. Now pocket the binder to a depth of 1 millimeter. This creates a perfect groove for the other half to fit in. Now I'll just transform the first body around a little bit so that they're standing face to face and I'll put them back together. And there we have it. Another group of comments expressed confusion over the design I did in the part workbench with its two splits resulting in four pieces being fused together into two pieces. But one thing that will always be true of CAD is that there's more than one right way to do things. The one you should use is the one you like best. So I'm going to do a part workbench design that looks more like the one I just did in the part design workbench. 
Once again, start with the profile of the cup in the sketcher on the XZ plane. Like the last video, I'm going to revolve that 360 degrees and do an offset of 2 millimeters filled. I'll use one splitting plane this time. I'm going to make it 150 by 150 millimeters. And since people seem to want to see more mouse and less keyboard, rather than standing it upright numerically, I'll include rotating at 90 degrees in the transformation. I'll split the cup just as before and hide away half of it for later. This time I'm going to make the interlock a tongue and groove system like I did for the part design workbench. Just select the face and create a sub-object shape binder. I've included that tool in my custom toolbar. I once again offset it negative 0.5 millimeters and extrude it to 1 millimeter. I'll select the right half of the cup and the extrude and do a boolean cut forming the groove. Now opening up the cut, I'll select the left side of the cup and the extrude and fuse them together. I'll select the front face of the tongue on the fusion and do a 0.2 millimeter chamfer. And again we have our split seed cup with a design very substantially similar to the one I just did in part design. There are some minor differences in where things are rounded, but those small differences really come down to personal preference and taste. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.